has come. If you're like me, and you grew up anywhere in the eastern portion of North America, this plant was probably a fairly common sight to you at some point in your life. It's commonly known as spiderwort. It is botanically known as Tradescantia andersoniana, which is something of a questionable name. This is really a hybrid species group composed of hybrids between Tradescantia virginiana, Tradescantia subaspera, and Tradescantia ohiensis. The hybrids are found in nature wherever the ranges overlapped, and these have been brought into cultivation. Which complicates matters further is that the Tradescantias in general seem to readily cross. Another issue is that Tradescantias are generally self-incompatible, so a single clone will not pollinate itself. So if you take two species from widely separated ranges and plant them into a garden, you will get fertile hybrids between those easily, and these things seed around terrifically in the garden. This can be a nuisance and it complicates things taxonomically, but it can also be a useful way to create hybrids with no effort. So let's look at these plants a little bit here. This is actually a random seedling that popped up. The original plant is a few feet away here. <clears throat> and this guy was here when we got the house about 12 years ago. And I don't know if it was planted or just popped up from seed from the previous owners and they just let it go. I don't know. As far as I can tell, this is an unimproved type. It looks like the kinds you would find growing wild in the woods around here. Well, let's just take a general look at these. So Tritoscantias are monocots. And like monocots, the floral structure is in multiples of three. So you can see that there's three petals and there's six anthers. Obviously, there's always exceptions to every rule, particularly in plants. However, this is a general, generally true about monocots. And you can see there's a, a simple leaf with parallel veination. So monocots are plants that when they germinate, you only have one cotyledon, one seed leaf. And the family is things like grasses, sedges, palms, cannas, gingers, and the spider warts. So this Tritoscantia is Tritoscantia Tough Love, which is a Chicago Botanic Garden introduction. Several years back, I should say many years back, probably, probably at least six years ago, my wife was sent some sample plants of this variety. Three, actually, there are three here. One, one side one in the middle, and another decent one here directly from Chicago Botanic Gardens for us to trial uh, the position that my wife is in in the ornamental horticulture industry sets us up to have a lot of plants sent to us to trial in this fashion so 
They have a lot of interesting things planted here. It's a real plants person's garden. So, Tough Love. Tough Love is a hybrid of two Midwestern heat and sun tolerant Tritoscantia species. The Eastern Andersoniana group that we looked at earlier, these tend to be species of woodland edges and oftentimes of bottomlands. I, I never see them growing on like a ridge top in sunshine or in a meadow. They definitely tend to grow towards like the edge of a ditch at uh, the edge of a forest. That's sort of an environment. So this, the species that compose this are much more adapted to dry, rocky, difficult sites. If I remember correctly, the species used to create this were Tritoscantia tharpi and Tritoscantia occidentalis. And you can see, still has three petals and six anthers. This is a much shorter, much more compact plant. I would say that it is about a third the height of typical Andersoniana group seedlings. In theory, it's supposed to retain its foliage all summer. I find that it is much better than the Andersoniana types, but it doesn't entirely retain its foliage, but it's definitely better than the Andersoniana types. So this is Tough Love, which was a Chicago Botanic Garden introduction. Several years ago, I want to say two or three years ago, a seedling popped up fairly near the Tough Love. Considering that at the time I only had the Tough Love planted in this area and the other Andersoniana type ones, at that point I only had one clone. I had to assume the seedlings were crosses due to self incompatibility mechanisms in Tritoscantia. And when the seedling flowered out, the flower color is this really deep purple, nothing like the light sky blue of the Andersoniana group seedling that we had. It also is a much denser, more filled in plant. It's a really, really tight dense plant and it's near the end of its bloom cycle now but it was just covered in blooms about two weeks ago and it also has really tremendous heat and drought tolerance compared to typical Andersoniana types it actually in honestly in a lot of cases this maintains its foliage better than the tough love I'm not sure if I've ever seen this go completely summer dormant Maybe once it went partially dormant, but not really. So I've started propagating this one. And at some point, we'll have to consider possibly introducing it as a name variety. It's really exceptional. And I've started on a limited basis getting a few into the hands of other people and planting it at other sites in the property here to see how things will do over time. But... It's really a pretty great variety. I'm really happy with it. And I didn't have to go to any special effort to create this cross. Uh, the inherent self incompatibility mechanism in the Tritoscantias enabled this cross to happen automatically, which is a pretty great way to do things. So if you're an aspiring plant breeder and you think that you have to do manual pollinations with tweezers and do complicated emasculations, this is not necessary for all things. Hello, bee. The bumblebees pollinating these guys. And right, let's go look at another one I found this spring.
this spring a seedling popped up fairly close to my putative hybrid and as it bloomed out I realized that many but not all the flowers have extra petals this one actually has six petals and here you can see some that had four but then this there's the typical three on that one so I don't know if this will you know be a stable trait or not it's uh, worth watching this guy I'm not sure what causes something like this to happen but it's interesting and some perennial geraniums growing in with that guy and some baptisias thanks for watching